Would you look at the time already? Lunch time already? I don't know about you, but I'm going to enjoy an all-time American favorite, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Not only am I going to teach you, my fellow classmates, how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich right here, right now, but I'm also going to enjoy this delicious snack. Allergic to peanuts? No need to fear. According to an article titled, The Sneaky Chef and Annie's Homegrown Collaborate to New Peanut Allergy Friendly PB&J Sandwich, written by Addie Menayang, there's an alternative to peanut butter, and it's actually pea butter. So they roast it to get rid of the bitter taste, and that's your alternative right there. Through my dedicated research and years of experience as a sandwich artist, I know I possess the skills and knowledge to teach you how to make a peanut butter and jelly. First, I will discuss the required materials, then I'll talk about the process, and then I'll talk about the cleanup process. Let's talk materials. So you'll need a butter knife, a plate, napkins in case it gets messy, bread, of course, peanut butter, mine's creamy, and jelly of your choice, I chose strawberry. After you've gathered your said materials, it's time to begin. First, you're going to want to unscrew that cap to that peanut butter, stick in your knife, grab a desired amount of your choosing, and you're going to spread evenly on your first slice of bread. For those peanut butter lovers, you can spread peanut butter on both sides for an extra peanut butter taste. After you've done that, you can set both of them down, grab your next slice, you're going to want to shake that squeezable jelly, or it'll come out all liquidy. And you squeeze a desired amount, you're going to take that knife again and spread evenly. Alrighty. And once you've completed that, you're going to pick up the peanut butter and slap the peanut butter side to the jelly side. Belly bump! Whoops, that was a little uneven. Alrighty. Some people like to cut their sandwich diagonally or straight down the middle, but I actually like to dip mine in my milk. And if you've never tried this before, you're missing out. To prevent a soggy sandwich, for those who like to pack school lunches, you can actually toast both slices of bread before you apply the peanut butter and jelly, and when it comes to lunchtime, you'll have a less soggy sandwich. I always say that it's best to wipe down your area after you've made your sandwiches, just in case somebody who comes in contact might have a peanut allergy. So I would recommend using the Lysol wipe. As our time ends here, I've taught you how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I talked about the materials required, the steps, and the cleanup process. According to an article by Elena Brown called Peanut Butter Stats, the average child will have eaten 1,500 PB&Js before graduating high school. I told you it was an all-American favorite sandwich.